Well, tonight in our Seven News flashback, the devastating 1994 bushfires. Two decades ago, Sydney was facing an unprecedented emergency. 20,000 firefighters battled a firestorm that claimed four lives and forever changed the way men and women on the front line fight fires. January 1994 dawned with disaster. A nervous night ahead for New South Wales, with fears that searing heat and strong winds will whip bushfires into a new frenzy. It's one of those watershed moments for, for New South Wales. Over three weeks, more than 800 fires burned from the state's south coast to the Queensland border. If anyone talks about New South Wales and fire history, um, you cannot escape the 94 fire period, simply because of the length and breadth of fire. Homes were lost in Newcastle. Gosford also came under threat. The first major outbreak in Sydney happened along the Lane Cove River. Residents of Bundina were forced to flee by boat. The F3 freeway and train line to Newcastle were cut as flames roared into Sydney's north shore. Radio calls by firefighters inside the inferno reveal the frantic battle to save homes and lives. Can I have any unit available for response? I'm going to try, but I don't think we'll be able to hold it. It's gone and it's heading east. We've got a sheet of flame in front of us. I can't get through at the moment. Uh, this fire is about to jump out of our road into the Ingleside Road area. Do you have another truck that can give us assistance urgently? Immediate danger to structure. Uh, we are trapped. All units are to pull out and make safe. I repeat, all units are to pull out and make safe. Taramurra, Kalara, Linfield, Pimble, Chatswood, Mona Vale, Cottage Point, hit by a wall of flame. At Ingleside, the future fire commissioner, Shane Fitzsimmons, joined the fire fight. A number of caravans and things have been lost already. Uh, I need immediate property protection. Soon, he needed protection. The road out is impassable. There's two fronts moving towards us. We sought to, um, to secure ourselves, to protect ourselves and wait for the main fire front to pass. Once that occurred, we were able to get back into to the thick of firefighting. Deliberately lit fires blazed around the city. Dozens of homes were destroyed around the Lane Cove and Karingai National Parks. Fire intensity, it's, it's an uncontrollable beast when it's like that. But the biggest loss was in the southern suburbs of Como and Janelli. Once the fire took hold, it, it just ripped through the area and then uh, from house to house. 100 homes were lost. One woman died in her swimming pool. Peter Evans was among the first firefighters to arrive. Homes burning, um, firefighters trying to get in and out uh, through the smoke to do what they can for, uh, to save as many properties as possible. The fire spread to the Blue Mountains as flames 70 metres high roared into Winmalee. It's wild now. This sounds like a steam train roaring down the hill. It is finally hit. The fires were so bad, New South Wales called for large-scale help from interstate for the first time. The army was also called in. Every time you turn around, there's a new fire, a new problem. By the time it was over, four people had been killed and over 200 houses were lost. A coronial inquest led to new laws which created the Rural Fire Service to provide a unified approach to firefighting. Prior to the changes, the 1994 operations centre was a low-tech affair. Whiteboards on the wall uh, and some magnets and telephones and the odd radio. That was about it. Now the RFS boasts a state-of-the-art headquarters at Lidcombe, where firefighters work alongside other agencies. The room you see here today uh, is a manifestation of all those learnings uh, over the last couple of decades. In 1994, it was harder to get warnings out. Ah, the fire's up there, get out now! During last year's Blue Mountains fires, technology played a key role. Today, uh, we've got social media tools, we've got websites, we've got, we've got telephone warning systems, we've got mobile devices. The planning for and the communications and the equipment we've got has changed significantly, uh, which en enables us to plan better and resource better. But as Winmalee residents saw once again in October, the threat and the need to be prepared never goes away. A fire is part of the landscape. Mark Ferguson, 7 News.